Hello everyone! As you can see in the title, this video will be about Warlords of Draenor, so that means spoilers ahead. I'm going to discuss certain characters and the ultimate fate, so if you don't want any spoilers, run while you still can. During my time on the beta and checking out the quest, I saw a whole bunch of characters die and with some of them, I really didn't see it coming. Jokingly, on Twitch, we said that Warcraft was following Game of Thrones now and some asked if I could put the deaths neatly in a row and give my opinion about it. I won't be covering any warlords that died during my questing since I figured we should all just expect them all to die. It might not come true, some of them might actually survive, but the expansion is called Warlords of Draenor, so my guess is that most of them, if not all, are are going to die at some point. Now starting off our list is Velen, and don't worry, it isn't our Velen, it's Iron Horde's Velen. In Shadowmoon Valley, we find out that Ner'zhul is being forced to join the Iron Hordes. When the Iron Horde came, they gave our clan a choice. Join them or die. My husband Ner'zhul chose to save our people. He joined the Iron Horde. But they asked of him a heavy price. They said, What good are stars and visions against steel and powder? Make a worthy offering, or your people shall die. So Ner'zhul turned to the silent void. He broke the ancient laws and drew upon the dark star. I pleaded with him to stop. But he would not turn back. By breaking this stone, he forswore all loyalty to our ancestors. To prove his worth to the Iron Horde, Ner'zhul decided to embrace the powers of the so-called Dark Star, something that was forbidden within the Shadowmoon clan. In a vision, Velen sees exactly what kind of damage this Dark Star can do. As long as I live, Karabor shall not fall! Prophet, your attempts are meaningless. Witness the true might of the Iron Horde. I cannot hold them back. Ner'zhul summoning the Dark Star means total defeat at the Battle of Karabor, and Velen cannot allow this future to happen, so he wants us to confront Ner'zhul and stop him. As Ner'zhul summons the Dark Star, Velen and Yurl they show up in an attempt to stop him. Darkness is my strength. With this power, the Shadow Moon will be. It is not too late. Turn from this dark path, and let us help you! My soul, prophet. There is no darkness. Light cannot pierce Ner'zhul. This beast must be stopped. No! The power of the Dark Star will be mine! Is with us. No matter, you are too late. A cinematic is supposed to show now, but unfortunately it's not implemented yet. I'm guessing that it will have something to do with Velen sacrificing himself in order to purify the Dark Star, the Dark Naru, and turn it back to the light. Ner'zhul doesn't die during this encounter, since he retreats to the Shadowmoon Bureau grounds where we finish him off. Ka'ara, the purified Naru, does give the Draenei the power to fight back and kick the Horde out of Karabor. Velen's sacrifice managed to change the future he envisions, and it bought a future for his people. He later shows up in a message left behind at his memorial, in which he explains the nature of the Dark Star. I already did a detailed video about this, but basically he explains that the Dark Star was actually a Naru, that he purified it, and that he hopes that his people will understand. Personally, I don't have that big of a problem with his death. 
Sure, it would have been nice to see Velen more in action before he died, especially since they used him during the teaser trailer, but at least this Velen does something. Our Velen was always told to stay behind and keep himself out of harm's way, which led to him having to sacrifice his people for the greater good. This Velen realizes that time it's been messed up and that those warnings no longer apply, so he gets to go out in a blaze of glory, empowering his people, which allows them to kick the crap out of the orcs. I think that's a way better way to go and like I said it would have been nice to see more of Velen but I'm kind of okay with the way that this one goes I'm all I'm all right with this remember life is the light and the light is life itself they may be exchanged but nothing is ever lost I only hope my people will understand the next zone on this list, Talador, has not one but two deaths. Shevrev City is under heavy assault from the Iron Horde and it's led by Orgrim Doomhammer. Before we talk about his death, I first should explain that there was supposed to be some sort of scenario prior to this one. But I don't think it's implemented yet or maybe it's cut out. I haven't been able to find this so-called scenario yet. Datamine information does suggest that Orgrim he has seen visions in which we are actually the bad guys and we're washing over Drenor to murder all his people. This is the reason why he stuck around with the Iron Horde while his best friend Duratan stepped away and moved to Frostfire Ridge. In our timeline, in our reality, Orgrim Doomhammer was a legend. He was always Blackhand second in command and he always stuck with his warchief. He was an orc driven by honor and when Duratan informed him about Gul'dan, how Gul'dan screwed them all over in his lust for power, well basically Orgrim wasn't happy about it. He stepped up to the plate and he did what he had to do. He challenged his warchief to a duel and he seized command over the original horde. He then dismantled Gul'dan's Shadow Council, made sure that that corruption was cut out of the Hordes and that the Horde would return to its path of honor. He did make one gigantic mistake though and this was leaving Gul'dan alive. Gul'dan promised Orgrim powerful troops, the first of the Death Knights, which in honesty did earn the Horde some amazing victories, but Gul'dan's lust for power also destroyed any hope of conquering Azeroth. Near the end of the war, Gul'dan splits his forces away from the Horde as he went to search for the Tomb of Sargeras and his search for more power. Orgrim was so driven by honor that he couldn't let Gul'dan get away with this, so he had to send some of his forces after the Warlock and retreats all the way back to Blackrock Mountain. At this point, they were actually seizing the capital city of Lordaeron, the final battle. If they took this city, they may have well conquered all of Azeroth. But Orgrim, he was an Orc of Honor and he retreated because he did what he had to do. At Blackrock Mountain, he took out the Alliance commander Anduin Lothar, but he eventually lost the fight against Turelian. The Alliance, they imprisoned Orgrim, he escaped the prison, and he would later help Thrall with liberating the Orcs and reform the Hordes. During these liberations, he was stabbed in the back by the Alliance, and he wouldn't make it, so he gave his armor and the legendary Doomhammer to Thrall, as well as making him the war chief of the Hordes. For Doomhammer! That's the short version of Doomhammer's brilliant story, but in Warlords, it seems like fate has other plans in mind. Like I said, this Orgrim never stepped away from the Iron Horde, and he's grouping up his forces as they are taking Shefrev City. You are my vanguard. This forest is ours. Leave no enemy alive! Iron will, iron blood. Go forth to victory! You are my vanguard. These shores are ours! Leave no enemy alive! Iron will, iron blood. Go forth to victory! When doing a questline as a Horde player, you'll follow Duratan and Draka around and you'll get an additional conversation between Duratan and Orgrim. Orgrim! Brother, what have you done? Brother, you have allied with enemy invaders, Duratan. You've chosen your side. Can you not see it? The Iron Horde will destroy Draenor. My visions show me otherwise. See your reason, old friend. 
You must stop this lunacy! War is not a time for reason. Lieutenant, deal with them! This conversation matches the data mined information, so basically Orgrim thinks we are the bad guys. Alliance players, they'll have Marat and Ural helping them with this questline, and eventually you're going into the city to kick some horde butt. Warlord Blackhand is standing on the ship and his second in command does not agree with his choices. I will not slay so many innocent people. Innocent? It is you who would make Draenor burn. It is you who must be stopped. Yes, I will see Draenor burn. You, traitor, will not. We will hold off Blackhand. Destroy that weapon. Champion, speak with me when you are ready to travel to the enemy battleship. Apparently Orgrim has a change of heart and he no longer wants to follow Blackhand's commands. Originally this was where Orgrim already kicked the buckets, but they've changed it so that he gets to fight a little longer. We take out the ship and the massive weapon that's set there and then we try to take on Blackhand himself. They need your help with Blackhand. I can get you there. Speak with me when you're ready. That's all you can muster! Weak! What news from the front? <laughs> Didn't anyone ever tell you not to play with fire? This is our moment. Again, there's supposed to be a cinematic placed in the game, but it's simply not there yet. The end result is pretty clear though. Ironhorde Orgrim Doomhammer and our Marad are both dead. This is one situation, one of those deaths where I'm like, really? Is that all we're going to get from the legendary Orgrim Doomhammer? I realize that it's not our Orgrim Doomhammer, but this seems so quick and disappointing to me. Now don't get me started on Marad dying here, they made such a big deal about Marad at BlizzCon, they were all like, yeah, sorry guys, they forgot to put him into the Burning Crusade, even though he was in the cinematic. But don't worry, Marad is going to do some awesome stuff during Warlords. So, you want to talk about some unresolved issues, Marad saw, uh, saw it all go down, he saw his people just slaughtered everybody he knew practically from Draenor slaughtered so he's got to face kind of the, the demons of his own past he's going back through there he's gonna try and set things right he's on the front lines of the Alliance going through and then his own values once he comes face to face with this are gonna get are gonna get questioned and tested we're gonna really get to get to explore this character I haven't seen much development about this story maybe there's some information in a cinematic somewhere but overall Marat just seems to be pissed about the iron hordes and then he's dead he looks so badass in the Lords of War videos he's leading the Alliance assault through the dark portal and then instantly he's dead such a waste and considering what they said about him at BlizzCon I'm really disappointed but it's definitely not the worst one on this list farewell Marad my friend be at peace the next death can be found in the spires of Arak our Admiral Taylor who has served the Alliance during the Cataclysm in Vashir and during Mr. Pandaria in the Jade Forest and Lion's Landing yeah, he served the Alliance all over the place. He's gone on ahead and he built his own garrison. One night, the garrison is attacked by the Iron Horde and one of Taylor's men, Ephiel, goes missing for several hours. When we're sent to the garrison, we find out that it's been turned into a ghost town and that Ephiel is responsible. He serves a being that he calls the Dark One and it's uncertain who or what this exactly is. It could be Gul'dan, it could be something with the Legion, it could be anything, but the result is the same. Some of Taylor's men, they turned against each other, and everybody is dead, turned into ghosts, into skeletons. It's a ghost garrison. In a gruesome display, Taylor can be found on a cross, and the soul of his dead men are used to transform Taylor into a bony creature called Soul Scythe. We're forced to put it out of his misery, and then we take care of a feel. There's no saving Taylor though, he's a spirit, but a soldier's duty is never done. This quest is available for both factions, but he will only join the Alliance garrison as one of its followers. He even gets a statue in the garrison outpost of the Spires, which says the following. 
In honor of Admiral Taylor. Admiral Taylor was a true hero of the Alliance. His numerous accomplishments on the battlefield serving his people will not be forgotten. He bravely set out to establish a garrison stronghold amongst these spires to further the Draenor campaign, but was cut down by his own men before his time. May he rest in peace. The Alliance shall prevail. Taylor's death, although kind of sad, is not a big deal in my opinion. He was the Nazgrim for the Alliance, and Nazgrim already died during the Siege of Orgrimmar. Sure, he didn't get an epic raid battle, but at least the Alliance wasn't forced to take out one of their own. He also gets a pretty sweet statue, and he becomes a follower, so he isn't really gone. And besides that, I never really liked Taylor's character. He just seemed like a douchey warmonger during Mr. Pandaria that just couldn't stop fighting. Even when he blew up the Jade Forest, when he was recovering from his injuries, he just... He didn't learn anything from Mr. Pandaria. That's just my take on him though, those that really like Taylor might be upset about losing him. King Rin for the win! I almost forgot to add this character to the list, but he's actually one of the first to die for the expansion. Our Kairos Dormu, together with Raphion, they helped Garrosh escape at the end of War Crimes. He uses the Vision of Time, the device we helped him create on the Timeless Isle, to make a portal to this alternative reality. We're not certain why they're helping Garrosh, except that they had the intention of creating an uncorrupted first horde. The reason for this uncorrupted horde could be a lot of things, which is left for speculation, but Garrosh has other plans in mind. He doesn't want his new horde to be controlled by the Legion, nor by these dragons. He wants this horde under his command. This is taken from the Hellscream short story. Steady breaths, do not let him bait you again. Garrosh picked up the shard with care, balancing it on the palm of his hands. When it had been hauled during Garrosh's trial, the Vision of Time had two sculptures of bronze dragons twined around the glass. This shard still had the head and neck of one of those figures melded with it. It was a convenient grip. I assume this holds no power for me, Garrosh said, his voice tight. Or you wouldn't have let me touch it. The thought made Garrosh's hidden anger burn white hot. Clearly. But do not lose it, that would make me upset, Kairos said. He wandered away from the campfire, idly plucking a leaf of a low-hanging branch and crushing it between his fingers until it was a green pulp. You made a good point, Garrosh. You, me, we're two strangers here. It might be best for us to approach the war song separately, months apart even. It will lessen the chances of your people assuming you and I are... Colluding. He dropped the crushed leaf to the ground and wiped his hand on his thigh. A light green stain remained on his palm. Show them the glass. Primitive as your kind was on this world, you had some awareness of the supernatural, yes? Your shaman will suffice. Any fool with little talent can tap into what you're holding. It will be enough to catch a glimpse of our Azeroth and the spoils of other worlds. Once you've convinced them to join your ideal horde and conquer all that they see, I will arrive. Just another orc following the new direction of his people. Kairos spread his arms wide. I will discover miraculous new uses for the shards. We will use it to travel to any world we please. I'm only interested in one. Garrosh said, because you never see the big picture. You want one horde free of demonic taints. I want more. We can cultivate an infinite number of hordes. Garrosh laughed. Kairos lowered his arms. His expression turned dangerous. You doubt me? Garrosh met his gaze openly. The hourglass was destroyed getting us here. I saw it broken on the floor on the Pandoran temple. He raises the shards. You might be able to perform a few tricks with this, but don't pretend this is still the vision of time. Think it through, Hellscream. Kairos' voice was light. Because most of the hourglass is still in our Azeroth, the pieces resonate with our time wave. Call it a glimpse, a glint of time. With a little work on my part, we can go back. Garrosh felt his heart race and his skin tingle. Plans began to unfold within his mind. Not just back to our Azeroth, it could take us back to our time. And that is just the beginning, Kairos said. He turned around, gesturing towards the sun dipping low on the Nagrant horizon. First Azeroth. Then other worlds, all of them, as many as we need. The bronze dragon began to laugh. Not just one, an infinite number of armies. 
across an infinite number of worlds. I would be infinite! Frish rides and Gerar slammed a shard into Kaidos' back. Laughter turned to shrieks, the jagged glass tore through flesh easily, not breaking even as it sliced through muscle and glanced off bone. Gerars kept a firm grip on the shard's bronze sculpture with his manacled hands. Power surged into the glass, bronze scales appeared and disappeared on Kairos' skin. He was trying to use the shard, trying to shift back into his dragon form. It wasn't working. Gerar shoved him over and followed him to the ground, dragging the sharp edge around Kairos' shoulder until it met the collarbone and had to be pulled free. The shrieks grow louder. Weak orcish hands struck out, trying to push Gerar away. He lowered his face the mere inches from the bronze dragon's eyes and he buried the shard in his throat. Shrieks turned into gurgling. Gerar held the shard firm, ignoring the torrents of energy racing in and out of the glass, focusing instead on the total surprise in Kairos' eyes. No more, Garrosh said. No more puppeteers hiding in the shadows. No more slavers offering corrupted power. No more of the likes of you. The orcs will be free of all masters. Garrosh twisted the shard and dragged it down into Kaidos' chest, stabbing again and again. Blood spilled onto the hilltop. Not orcish blood, not the blood of any creature that had ever walked on this world, but the land would drink it all the same. Finally, he pulled the shard free and stood. Kairos convulsed on the ground. Garrosh watched, curious. He had never killed a bronze dragon before. The shard trembled in his grip, beating in time with the dragon's final heartbeats. Bronze mist, each moat thick as a grain of sand, wafted away from Kairos. It was not dispersing like smoke, but rather pulling together into a thin, rope-like vortex, twisting away into nothing, as though being drawn away from this world. When the bronze mist was gone, the shard was quiet. Kairos' eyes were wide open and he breathed no more. Garrosh waited. He wanted to be sure. Minutes passed before he grunted and nodded. An easier end than you deserved. He left the body where it lay. Any who happened upon it would simply see an orc who had angered someone he shouldn't have. Garrosh makes sure to kill the bronze dragon before making his way to Warsong Clan and set things in motion. Some data mined voice files, they suggest that we'll be joining Chromie and will discover Kairos his fate. I don't know if this is the only time that we'll be visiting Kairos, since the legendary questline also has a part for Kairos to play. Perfect timing! We'll track you from the air! Follow the trail of time anomalies like this! Here! It looks like Garrosh came down this way alone after he first arrived on Draenor. But where was Kairos? Hmm, that ogre shouldn't be here. Something strange must have happened up on this ridge. That's Kairos in disguise! Garrosh killed him! But where is the body? It is. The final resting place of Kairos Dormu. Sorry for all the times you're about to get killed. If it's any consolation, you won't remember any of them. Good night, my time-lost prince. Which brings us to the final death, and probably, for me, the most disappointing one out of all of them. In Nagrand, we find out that our Garrosh has become the war chief of the Warsong clan, as Gromash is now the overall warlord of the Iron Horde. Garrosh even has Gorhal again, and I haven't found the answer as to why. It's not the Gorhal from our reality, he left that one behind during the siege, so I'm guessing it was either a gift from Grum, or maybe something passed on when he became the war chief. I'm guessing something along those lines. Either way, in order to take out the Iron Horde, we'll have to assault the Warsong clan and Garrosh. A step-by-step -step siege takes place, together with Ural if you're Alliance, or Duratan if you're from the Hordes. Light, help us. Please be calm. Let's get in there. Siege engines, fire! Alliance, advance! With faith, we Bad may news, Commander. They've enslaved Dern the Hungerer. We have to go through the beast to get to Garrosh. Get into the Holy Land! Time to take a stand. Victory will be ours. Come, Draenei Witch. I'm waiting. Dekan, I need you and our forces to stay here. 
Buy us the time we need to deal with Gerosh. Whatever happens, Marad would be proud of you. You're a fool to come here! Blow up in these gates! You think I'm for everything! You can kill me! He'll bring you to justice, monster! Justice? You don't know the meaning of the word! At the top, you take down the gates and you face off against Garrosh himself. He smacks you around for a bit, he lets you taste Gorau's steel, but at some point, he just has enough. Taste Gorau's steel! Now, you die. Garrosh! Thrall! You're too late, old friend. No, no more, Garrosh. Just you and me. I challenge you to Makora! Thrall! No! Very well, shaman. We finish this alone, where it all began, at the Stones of Prophecy. You're instantly stunned and you're heavily bleeding on the floor, but thankfully, Vral comes to the rescue. I can't wait to see the cinematic that's supposed to happen, since it should be damn freaking epic to justify killing Garrosh like that. You can find his corpse stuck in some sort of earthly hand, and I don't think there's much room for doubt about if he's actually dead or not. So this is the way that Garrosh, his storyline ends. Garrosh, the former war chief of the Horde, of the True Horde, and even the Warsong Clan. Live by these words, Loktar Ogar, victory or death. You might have guessed it already, but I really think this sucks. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful ending for the whole Garrosh and Thrall storyline. I like how they return to where it began, to the place where Thrall found Garrosh in Outlands, all the way back during the Burning Crusade. That's all cool, that entire circle, that's pretty neat. There's nobody else better suited for killing Garrosh, but this ending, it could have been given at the end of the siege, and then we could have skipped all the time travel bullshit. They did absolutely nothing to develop Garrosh's character further. During war crimes, you got the impression that change is actually possible, even for someone like Garrosh. There was an interview with Christy Golden in which they actually confirmed that Garrosh, if given the opportunity, could have changed. So I'm not crazy for saying this. So why didn't they do more with his character? Why let him live after the siege? Let him go through the bullshit trial and then the bullshit time travel just to create the expansion Warlords of Draenor. Why not make it just a little bit of a different garage than what we saw at the end of the siege? This way you turn such an epically built up character into nothing more than a plot device. A tool to get us to Draenor and there are plenty of ways that they could have done it differently. You could have for example sent Kairos on his own, disguised as an orc to infiltrate the Warsong clan and maybe use some of his draconic magic to manipulate Gromash. Maybe just convince Gromash like Garrosh had. You didn't have to necessarily use Garrosh. You would end up with pretty much the same expansion, even though I loved the Warlords of Draenor trailer, I loved that moment where Garrosh pushed his father out of the fire, but why not give him some sort of development? Garrosh in this expansion was kind of a, um, to me personally, it was a little bit of a letdown because some of his characterization as far as like um, the legacy of Grom wasn't really addressed. There were some things where like Grom had made a mistake where he had corrupted the entire race, and then we have a scene where Garrosh takes the heart of your Saj, corrupts himself, goes down basically the same path and never acknowledges it. I was just wondering if you guys were going to address that in the next expansion. Y yeah, yeah, I think, I think, yes, we are going to. Yes, and, times two. And times two, and I feel like we, we may have pushed Garrosh um, a little too far in one direction. Um, I, my fault. Uh, <laughs> But, but uh, I think we, we are going to, I don't want to say we're going to redeem him. We're not going to redeem him. But I think we will provide for a satisfying ending for you, Thank you. and him. Yeah, yeah I mean, you. At, at the end of the day, what we're talking about is whether his path had a lot of continuity with his daddy's path, for sure. And 
And oh hell, it, it ain't over yet. But what you're what you're totally looking at there is that this dude has crazy daddy issues. Yeah. Right? No, exactly. This little boy growing well, up exactly. in Garrosh. Well, exactly. I was just hoping that that would be like some major. I just part don't. Garrosh isn't. Gonna, he's not going to talk. You'll about see that. It. He's not going to talk to us about it, right? But like. Yeah, he's got some serious issues. And ultimately, I mean, when you really look at this idea, he's working some stuff out. He's literally going back, like, like yeah, it's, it's, it's foreground, you know? Yeah. I've said well, too much. You, 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 no, you haven't said too much, but yeah. there's a lot of Garrosh explanation that's going to happen in this expansion. I, for, for the better, I think, though. So hopefully it'll shed some light on him. I really had hoped that they would do something with Garrosh to justify keeping him alive, but there wasn't anything. You could argue that war crimes that the trial itself was used up to tie the loose ends of Mr. Pandaria, but again, there are more ways to do this. I don't know why I'm so disappointed, I think I, I just had hopes for a more epic ending to Garrosh. I, I figured like, okay, they're, they're keeping him alive after the end of the siege. They're probably going to do something epic with him, right? Surely they, they won't just use him as a plot device. Surely we'll see Gerrash change, maybe doubt, maybe realize that this, this horde that he envisioned wasn't as perfect as he thought. But none of that. It's the exact same Gerrash at the end of the siege. The exact same Gerrash that Thrall just could have bashed his brains in if Varian didn't interrupt it. And you would have ended up with the same character. It just, it's just mind-blowing and disappointing in my opinion. The cinematic, it might make up for a whole lot of it, but I doubt that Garage will change much in a single cinematic, and, well, I could sit here and complain about it, but there's nothing to do about it now. This was, however, the final death that I was going to cover in this video, which means that we're at the end. I do want to hear your opinion, though. What do you think about these deaths? Do you think that I'm just uh, complaining here? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. Would love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. And until next time, guys, see ya!